ladies and gentlemen, this is a regular meeting of the Council of the City of Southfield for Monday, September 24, 2012. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Thank you, Mr. Seiger. Here. Mr. Moss. Here. Ms. Jordan. Here. Mr. Fraser. Here. Mr. Fricassi. Here. Mr. Lamb. Here. Ms. Seymour. Here. We have seven members present. Thank you. Please stand and join us for the presentation. <laughs>
three a three year cycle and we have to appoint all three again, we want to stagger so that we only have one person coming up new uh, each time. So that's why uh, Mr. Reiser was a three year term, Mr. Mamola was a two year term, Mr. Griffiths was a one year term, and then to have some continuity, uh, Mr. Ogle as the alternate will be the, uh, there for the three years. Uh, Madam Clerk, you, would you like to swear him in?
a project amount of $149,185 for Civic Center Drive expansion joint replacement to ensure the continued safety and durability of the bridge structure. This is in accordance with the city's bridge inspection and preventive maintenance program. The project is included in the 2012-2013 budget capital project program of major streets and was reviewed with city council as part of the study session and presentation of the 2012-2013 budget. Item D is approval of the annual agreement with SMART, the Suburban Mobility Authority for Regional Transportation, which provides $156,238 in funding <coughs> for transportation of Southfield seniors and physically or mentally challenged residents. The amount provided is flat to last year's allotment. Item E is authorization to extend the existing contract with Ross Towing for the two year 30 September 2012 to August 31, 2014, the option for said extension having been provided in the original 2010 contract. This provides for towing and storage vehicles relating to accidents, damage, or abandoned vehicles, clearing of accident debris from the roadways, and secure storage until the vehicle is redeemed by the owner or sold by the city at auction. No city expenditures are involved in this contract. Item F is amendment of an existing competitive bid contract in the amount of $164,800 based on price and quality of work with Fidelar Construction of Wixom, Michigan for roadway joint and crack sealing and over banding. This program cost effectively extends the useful life of city roads through preventive maintenance. Funds are provided for this purpose in the 2012-2013 major and local streets budget. Item G is to see a bid for the demolition of the dilapidated residence under an order of the 46th District Court. A lien will be placed on the property to cover the demolition cost. This is an essential element in a regressive and comprehensive code enforcement and community appearance program. The recommended low bid award is the amount in the amount of $11,980 to Universal Consolidated Roadsville, Michigan for demolition and the cleanup of all debris. Madam President. Mr. Moss. Uh, I move to accept uh, the consent agenda items A through G. Support. A motion by Mr. Moss, supported by Mr. Fraser. Mr. Yes. Mr. Mr. Cassidy. Uh, there's a correction I don't know if that was mentioned by you or not. And, uh, we have further resolved the funding in the total project amount is 149000 versus 131300 How much item is that? It's on the Civic Center Drive Bridge expansion. Okay. And it was placed out on a table. I did not see that. I didn't. That was a, uh, a uh, correction in that we had not had all the costs in the total. Uh, we added a contingency and uh, had to be added into the total. Right. So the 149185 uh, is the correct amount and it, uh, in the resolution and it matches, of course, the color right. for the added. All right, excellent. Thank you very much. So noted. Uh, we have a motion and it's been. Yes, Mr. Jordan. I had a question as it relates to the chair to item number E.
try for short friendly persuasion. Thank you. Who are the parents of we care about the appearance of the community? We have a motion in support. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion has carried. Next we have a public hearing on the proposed zoning ordinance text amendment. Alternative financial services and pawn shops are Mr. Crowe. Chair. Mr. Kleiner. Public hearing is on the proposed zoning ordinance text amendments dealing with alternative financial services and pawn shops. This proposed text amendment will amend Article 2 definition, Article 4 general provisions, and Article 18 general business district B3 within Chapter 45 zoning of the Code of the City of Southfield to provide definitions, parking requirements, and standards as they relate to alternative financial services and pawn shops in the City of Southfield. The proposed amendment will promote enforcement and is necessary to ensure the health, safety, and welfare of the community. Is this a public hearing? Yes. I declare the public hearing open. Anyone who wishes to address the council, please step forward to the end of the address. Seeing none, I declare the hearing public hearing closed. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. I move that the ordinance on pawn shops and alternative financial services study session that took place, and we had a map also that indicated some of the potential AFS locations and existing ones, and I'd like to move for that approval of this ordinance, please. Mr. Chairman, I move to Fred Hathi, supported by Mr. Stiver. I have a question. Mr. Frederick. On page 12, and this is just for my information, it says that neon signs are prohibited. My question is, are we limiting, are we backing ourselves into a corner by identifying it as neon signs? If there is some other kind of a gas that's used, because what we're trying to do is prevent lighted signs, I presume, from being used. Through the chair, that's correct. We can make an amendment that says neon signs are a similar type of signage. I would think that would give us more flexibility. Right. And we'll bring that back when you actually enact it for next month. Okay. Thank you. All right. We have a motion by Mr. Kowski, supported by Mr. Stiver. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion has carried. We do. This is introducing. The motion is to introduce. I move to introduce ordinance number 1597. Support. Motion by Mr. Frazier, supported by Mr. Stiver, to introduce ordinance 1597. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion has carried. We have no site plans this evening. Next is under the communications portion. First, a request for recognition of Ms. Geraldine Amato. Is Ms. Amato present this evening? Ms. Amato, do you step forward, please, and bring in the address for the record, and you have five minutes. Good evening. Geraldine Amato here. I wanted to comment, well, I want to reinforce my testimony that this nation has now been privatized, and we don't recognize that consciously, and we're participating in the undermining of what's left of the republic of this nation, where the people are supposed to be in control of this decision-making process. So one of the examples of this privatization of this nation is the control of the so-called communications media, where the public is no longer allowed access, except by permission of those who own the airwaves, et cetera. There is a token public access, and this microphone is a token because little of what's said here by the public matters as far as the agendas they are set from above. 
The municipal corporation is a subsidiary of the corporate state of Washington, D.C. today, which has been privatized. And the ownership of these entities, both public, uh, public label or private label, is the owners of the banks, the cartels, because they have seized the wealth of this nation. Some of us still have discretionary resources in possession, but none of us own what we possess. And more of us are being dispossessed. And unless there is an uprising of people who have discretionary resources under their control still, to use those resources to set a different course for the ship of state, this nation is headed towards a totalitarian disaster. But, for example, with the campaign process, now, people must buy their way to the public through the media outlets. Under the principles of the Republic, every candidate for office could communicate with the public freely without paying for it. That's no longer the case. The balloting and the vote counting have been electronified so that uh, there is very little oversight by the people. There was a investigative journalist in the 1970s, James Collier, who published a book on his studies, Vote Scam and Stealing of America, and the conclusion he came to after his discovery when he was running for office at one point in history was that if we do not begin counting, first of all, receiving the ballots on plain paper script, and then counting them by hand at every precinct, we will never have again honest elections in this country. He says there's all kinds of voter fraud going on with electronic devices, and we do not have open public vote counting. We have secret vote counting with the electronic uh, tallying machines. So the voter fraud that's talked about in the mainstream controlled press is minuscule compared to what is happening with the uh, software, the hardware, and the other electronic devices that are used in the balloting of the vote counting. So we do not have free elections in this country. We do not have a free society here. And unless the spirit of freedom arises again in the hearts and minds of the good people of this nation, we will lose every vestige of freedom that we still have. Like I'm allowed here to say a few words. I'm not allowed to say too much. And I don't have access to the communication so-called media, but now they are corruption, deceptions, and um, manipulations, and brutalizations of media. I listen occasionally to so-called public radio coming out of Detroit, the only one I'm able to receive here in Southfield. And you have, apparently you have to pay to get on the air as a call in there, 75 cents, I think it is. And then you shut up or you cut off if you bring up a subject that the master uh, host doesn't want to discuss, or his bosses tell him not to have discussed. The presidential office, we have this campaign circus that will be going on through November, is owned by the owners of the banks of the cartel. It doesn't matter whether it's a Democrat, an African American, or a Republican, or whoever is in that office, they are controlled. And they're staged, scripted, and orchestrated. The campaign season is just like a, a you know, a a, a few months long uh, Hollywood series. The same people who own the entertainment industry, own the campaign industry, and the, what they call it, political consultants and all that industry. It's an industry. And we do not have control of the, sh of the juries to bring any criminal in high office to judgment. Mr. Mallory, your time is up. Okay, I just want to mention one thing. Uh, there's this other circus at the local level about the Florida mayor. Time is up. I must, ask, I must ask you to complete. Your time is up. If I must stop. You must stop. Your time is up. Well, you're proving the case what I'm saying here. Well, I'm sorry. Well, this is, uh, this is council's rule. Council's rule is to give every, everyone who wants to speak. Yeah, well, I don't have to be so authoritarian about I'm not. I'm just you telling you. You can let me finish my sentence. Oh, my sentence. Oh, yeah. I said there's a circus also going on about the former mayor of Detroit. And they call it like a criminal enterprise he was running, supposedly. That's like the chief of the bandits. That's a lot That's the more than a sentence. But we don't have to tell the jury. Or the court. That's They're all privatized. Right. All right. Any questions? <laughs> Next request is Ms. Pamela Gerald. <coughs> My name is Pamela Gerald. I am an independent voice for Southfield. If you
you're watching this meeting on Cable 15 or listening to my voice via YouTube or audio reproduction, I can be reached at P.O. Box 155, Southfield, Michigan, 48037-0155, or by telephone at 248-352-9188. I am just a phone call away. I am honored and humbled by all of you who stopped me to tell me that you watch the council meetings now. I also appreciate and take very serious your compliments on how much you've learned about Southfield with my speeches. Thank you and keep on watching. 2013 is just around the corner. People, we must have integrity, respect, and civility brought back to this council and to the city. For too long, there has been a double standard way of doing business that has torn this city apart. People, it's time for a change. Council, it's time for a change, and city administration, it's time for a change. Here's a prime example of a double standard I'm referring to. In July of this year, on a Friday about the third or fourth week in the month, an employee in our police records department was caught stealing two envelopes from a locked safe that required two different keys to open. The envelopes contained cash and or checks totaling about $500 to $1,000. That employee that was caught stealing was white and believed to be the daughter of a Southfield retired police lieutenant that's good friends with Brian Gerald. This employee was not immediately fired and charged like the black cop who worked for the Southfield Police Department who allegedly stole the golf mitt from Beachwood Recreation Center. If that cop did what was alleged and he was fired, then his punishment was just due. When the white employees from the records department found out that they were on to her stealing the envelopes, she tried to put them back in the safe, but she was caught. This employee was given a week off while the city looked into the matter, and notice I said looked into the matter, that the matter was not being investigated. Now this was a coincidence because this employee was already scheduled for a week's vacation. So technically at the taxpayer's expense, at the expense of the integrity of the police department, records department, she was paying for her week off because she was scheduled for vacation. Now, in the famous words of Chris Rock, that ain't right. That ain't right. Now, the black employee in the department she was questioned. Why? She didn't steal the envelopes. But you know why? Stereotypes. As Chris Rock would say, that ain't right. She didn't steal the envelopes. The white employee stole the envelopes. Now, let me tell you why this is important to the people. Brian Gerald is a candidate for the permanent chief of police position in Southfield. Now, it's alleged that he covered this up. He did not discuss this matter with Chief Eric Hawkins and Chief Jeff Tinsman. Now why? You said, Ms. Jordan, there's no cover-ups in this city? Why wasn't that matter discussed with two other high-ranking officials? And do you think it should have been discussed? I'm just an outsider looking in, but I think it should have been discussed. This is a very serious matter. Now, all I want the people to know is that it's time for a change. It's time for the double standard and the status quo to be put to an end. And I just want you to remember that you've heard me say it's time for a change. And 2013 is coming up. Now, I'm really appalled to find out that a black employee in the Treasury Department is put on administrative leave, I'm sure with no pay, because of an accusation of stealing. Now, to my information, and if I'm correct, has she been proven guilty? Was the accusation founded or was it unfounded? But she's on administrative leave. Now, explain that coincidence. White employee stealing, black employee accused, she's back to work allegedly, she's not at work allegedly. What's the problem here? That's the double standard. Now, this is why we need right now a permanent police chief in this city, one who is educated, 
qualified, respected by his peers, and can improve morale because the morale is down in the and in the police department. Do something about it now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
and South Hill City Government. I propose that Council award an annual prize for the best presentation given at the Council meetings during the public hearings portion of the agenda. The prize, the prize would be that the winner would have their picture, a full page photo, published on the cover of the South Hill Living Activities Guide, reenacting their award winning performance before Council. This photo will be placed on the cover of the spring issue of the guide. This would add needed variety to an already stale guide. We're all sick and tired of the same old photos. You're in and you're out. It's time for a change. For example, in the last four guides alone, count them, four, uno, dos, tres, cuatros. That's right, four plagiarized photos from the award-winning South Hill City Council. And to top it off, the last issue has a plagiarized picture of none other than Council's favorite project. You guessed it. Carpenter Lake. Also known as Central Park.
certain inappropriate behaviors, I feel that we must, uh, we must respond. And I can assure you and anyone in this audience, and Ms. Gerald, and our members of the public, that this matter will be handled appropriately, comprehensively, and, uh, and that it will be handled uh, with proper respect of all parties concerned. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Next, we come to the council portion, and we have a request to change the meeting schedule, specifically the starting time of the October 1st meeting. Any motion? Motion by Mr. Jordan and support by Mr. Steiger to change the starting time of the October 1st meeting. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion has carried. Next, we come to the. I'm sorry, we're still on council. Go ahead, Mr. Picasso. Madam Chair, um, I had asked legal to uh, ask for an ordinance. Uh, at a regular council meeting, it was uh, brought up by a man that there was running over in the downtown development district area in soliciting. And uh, so I had them ask for an ordinance that was uh, readily available that Detroit had. I'd like to yeah, this right, uh, refer to the legal department and, uh, and, and for it to be a whole for discussion at a later date. Do you have a copy of this? I, I do. I do. We'll refer that to the city attorney for uh, study and put on a future agenda. Mr. Fraser? Yes, uh, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Kerr a question. Uh, we just passed the ordinance for uh, alternate financial services. Uh, one of the things that we talked about was uh, as another method of people getting out of financial trouble was bank on. Is that a viable alternative, or is that a viable option? Not an alternative, but a viable option uh, for for us to pursue, or is it? something that's probably too expensive or too over our head to, to do. Through the chair, um, I had done some research at our study session. I'm not prepared to make that determination tonight, but I, I will relook at the material that we research and get back to you. I do know that it's um, maybe labor intensive and, and there are some financial obligations that are required, but uh, I don't know if we could get a sponsor to to you know, a bank or something to, to sponsor the thing. But, uh, um, the one thing that we don't really need is additional work on our staff and our administration. So uh, I'm not asking to do it. I'm just saying let's take a look at it. And if it sounds reasonable and can be done, maybe we ought to pursue that because there are a lot of people that are using these alternate financial services and being exorbitant uh, interest in, in it's just working against them. I agree. Okay, thank you. Uh, you said, Mr. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're done? Okay. Um, Pardon? Ms. Gordon? Yes, thank you. Uh, two items I'd like to bring to council's attention. One being, I brought up a couple weeks ago regarding looking at limiting or even introducing an ordinance regarding the clothing that and if we could, Madam Chair, bring that to a study session so that we could get some discussion. I, I didn't hear that. In the clothing bin, the recycling yeah. bin, yes, 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 yes. that are around. Uh, yes. Yes. yes, we can we want to. We definitely do, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, we've already asked substantial progress. Some of them are gone. Uh, and uh, we'd like to put it on, uh, at least to give an update on, on where we are now, what our plans are, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But we are making progress. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And the other item has to do with one of the comments made by an individual in the public as it relates to the calendar and the award winning calendar that we do receive it every year. And I'd like to commend our community relations department to keep up the good work because they're doing an outstanding job. Well, we're being recognized nationally for this calendar, so I think that's a everything. Um, no. Next, we come to the mayor's portion, and council, I'm going to uh, ask, I'm going to pull this item from the agenda since the mayor isn't here. In case there's any questions that come up, and we'll wait until she returns to take this up. Uh, come to administration, Mr. City Administrator, if you have anything that you wish to Nothing further to add, thank you. All right, and, um, the city attorney. I have 
end up with Susan. Thank you. Um, um, yes, I would just like to remind the public that on Tuesday, October the 9th, this is the last day to register to vote for the upcoming November 6th presidential election. We encourage everyone to please um, get out and register to vote. The city clerk's office is open 8 to 5, Monday through Friday, as well as the Secretary of State's office. And we presently are in the process of issuing absentee ballots. So if you are unable to attend the polls on November 6th, please um, call or stop by the office to request the answer to the office. Thank you. Very, very important. Thank you. Very, very important. Um, Mr. Crow, did you have any more? I have nothing tonight. All right. We have nothing to schedule. We have no ordinances. I don't think there's a good public feels that they're getting after money's work today. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have... Uh, Maybe that'll be the last. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we can think of something. I just want to just.